Welcome to No BS TS, episode six. In this one, we're gonna look at the oddly named tuples, define what they are, and then show how to implement on them and show some common implementations that you might see out there in the wild. All right, let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create another file called tuples. And I'm gonna make what most people would consider the kind of canonical tuple, at least in the documentation, and that is a 3D coordinate. So I'm gonna define a type of 3D coordinate. And then I'm going to define this as a tuple, and a tuple is an array. So I'm gonna start with an array, and then each value in there is given a name and a type. So X is gonna be a number, Y is going to be a number, and then Z is going to be a number. So in this case, all of them are the same number, but in tuples, each particular item in that array can be any type you want, and we'll see that in just a second. Okay, so let's actually implement on this and show you how it works. So I'm gonna create a function that adds two 3D coordinates together. So it's gonna take C1, which would be a 3D coordinate, and then C2, which is also a 3D coordinate, and then it's going to return a 3D coordinate. And with that, I'm just gonna take C1 at zero and add it to C2 at zero. Copy and paste that two more times. Change this to a one, that to a two, this to a one, that to a two, and we should be good. So let's console like that out and give it a try. And we just specify it using an array. So we'll say zero, 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 and add it to 10, 20, 30. See how that goes. All right. Let's do MPX TS node and then do tuples. See how we go. All right, 10, 20, 30. Let's make sure we got the right order. So just change out that origin point or whatever. Yeah, looking pretty good. Okay, great. But if you're a React engineer, you actually probably deal with one particular tuple all the time, and that's the use state tuple. So use state returns a state and then a state setter. Let's go and implement our own simple string state that does something similar. So it's gonna take an initial value, which is a string, and then it's going to return a tuple. And that tuple is going to have first an accessor. In this case, we're gonna use a function and that's going to return a string. And then we're gonna have a setter. So that'll take a string and return void. Looking pretty good so far. So let's create a variable for our state. And then give it the initial value. And then I'm going to return an array and that array is going to have a function in it. The first one returns that string, and the second one takes a string, and then sets the string value to that incoming string. And just like before in previous videos, this is a closure. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna capture the initial state of the string, and then as we change it, it's going to be tracked. So it's basically a piece of stored state. Okay, so now let's use this. So we want a string one getter and a string one setter. And that's gonna come out of simple string state. And then I'm gonna give it the initial value of hello. And let's just console log the output of string one getter. and then use string one setter to set it. We can see that we're hinted that V is a string. So we're gonna say goodbye and then call that again, just to make sure that we're, at, we're getting the right value. Let's uh, try this out one more time. There we go, started off as hello and became goodbye, awesome. And just to show you that this is a unique piece of state, let's go and create a different one We'll call this one the string two getter and setter. And we'll make that jack. And then we'll console log that to start. And then console log that again at the end. 
and you'll see that there is no difference, right? So we don't actually set string setter two, uh, and so it's still gonna retain the same value as it had when we initially called that function. Okay, so now you know that a tuple is an array, and each one of the elements in the array can be named and have different types. In the next one, we're gonna look at my favorite part of TypeScript, and that's generics. And I think that's when you start to see the real power of TypeScript. Can't wait to see you there. Of course, in the meantime, if you like this video, please like and share it with your friends. And of course, if you really like the video, hit that subscribe button and click that bell, and you'll be notified the next time one of these videos comes out.